Preston Bradley once said that every life has a dominating theme. This is overwhelmingly true. When reflecting on Nelson Mandela's life this far, it is easy to see that being a leader was a dominating theme in his life. Mandela's work as an activist against apartheid in South Africa is his most well-known contribution. He even received the Nobel Peace Prize for his resilience in unifying his country. To understand someone's life theme, one must look into his or her background. Mandela did great things, but where did it all begin? His hardship, struggle, and passion made him a great leader, and it all began from the day he was born. Nelson Mandela was born on July 18, 1918. He was born to a chief, making him royalty. Due to the fact that he was born into great circumstance, he was given the opportunity to receive an education. He was the first of his family to go to school. Education was extremely important to Nelson Mandela. He was a hard worker from a young age, completing school in two years instead of three. Nelson then attended college with the hopes of receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree. During his time at school, he met some friends that would become very influential in his life. Nelson was banned from the college, however, when he chose to stand for his beliefs and boycott university policies. This didn't stop Nelson. After he refused an arranged marriage, he went back to school. This time he studied law. He graduated from the university with his law degree as he worked as a clerk. Nelson Mandela, despite his struggles, became a well-rounded student. He pursued what he was passionate about and stood firm for what he believed. From a young age, Nelson Mandela be began acquiring skills that would make him into a great leader. As Nelson Mandela grew older, he eventually joined the South African political party called the African National Congress, typically referred to as the ANC. Since its founding, the ANC's main goal had been to work to improve conditions and rights for people of color in South Africa by encouraging boycotts, strikes, civil disobedience, and non-cooperation. Because of his love for leadership and his gift for group guidance, he was soon placed in charge of finding volunteers for the ANC's campaign for the defiance of the unjust laws. Mandela traveled the country and found over 8,500 volunteers who were willing to break past laws and curfews, and these mass rallies and strikes attracted over 93,000 new members to the ANC. The government reacted to this campaign by introducing harsher penalties for protests against apartheid. Campaign leaders and opposition newspapers were banned and thousands of people were arrested, including Mandela. ANC activists were now put under government surveillance. In 1955, Nelson Mandela helped the African National Congress write a Freedom Charter, which stated that South Africa belongs to all people living within it, regardless of race, and that all South Africans should be treated equally before the law, and that the country's wealth should be distributed equally. In 1956, Mandela, along with 155 others, were arrested by the apartheid government because of the Freedom Charter and were put on trial for treason. The main trial lasted until 1961, when all of the defendants were found not guilty. The treason trial was a serious blow to the ANC. Their executive members were out of circulation for a considerable period of time, for about five years. David Ian, a professor at Grand Valley State University who teaches the history of South Africa, explains that this was done on purpose. It was meant to weaken the strength of the African National Congress, he said, and it was unnecessarily dragged on. In 1961, Nelson Mandela and other ANC members were seeing that nonviolent demonstrations against apartheid did not work. The group MK, otherwise known as Spear of the Nation, was therefore created. The MK carried out numerous bombings of military, industrial, and civilian sites. The tactics were initially geared towards sabotage, but eventually expanded to include urban guerrilla warfare. Mandela, along with nine other leaders of the MK, were soon arrested and tried for 221 acts of sabotage designed to overthrow the apartheid system. This is how the courageous leader, Nelson Mandela, was sentenced to life in prison. In the winter of 1964, Nelson Mandela arrived on Robben Island where he would spend 18 of his 27 prison years. As a black political prisoner, he received the lowest level of treatment. His living conditions were more than unpleasant. 
confined to a small cell, the floor his bed, a bucket for a toilet, he was forced to do hard labor in a quarry. He was allowed one visitor a year for 30 minutes. He could write and receive one letter every six months. But despite the unpleasant circumstances, Robin Island became the crucible that transformed him. Through his intelligence, charm, and dignified defiance, Mandela eventually bent even the most brutal prison officials to his will, assumed leadership over his jailed comrades, and became the master of his own prison. He remained in prison on Robben Island for 18 years before being transferred to Polsmer Prison on the mainland in 1982. He was even able to earn a Bachelor of Law degree through a University of London correspondence program while incarcerated. Nelson Mandela emerged from prison as a mature leader who would fight and win the great political battles that would create a new democratic South Africa. Only free men can negotiate. Prisoners cannot enter into contracts. Nelson Mandela The hardships and struggles of prison did not tear Mandela down. In fact, it was those hardships and struggles that fueled his own passion and passions for his cause were being fueled outside of the prison gates as well. In 1990, President F. W. de Klerk lifted the ban on the ANC and Mr. Mandela was released from prison and talks on forming a new multiracial democracy for South Africa began. Throughout his imprisonment, he had rejected at least three conditional offers of release. On the day of his release, Mandela made a speech to the nation. He declared his commitment to peace and reconciliation with the country's white minority, but made it clear to the ANC's armed struggle was not over when he said, I resort to the armed struggle in 1960 with the formation of the military wing of the ANC was a purely defensive action against the violence of apartheid. The factors which necessitated the armed struggle still exist today. We have no option but to continue. We express the hope that the climate conductive to a negotiated settlement would be created soon, so that there may no longer be the need for an armed struggle. He also said in his main focus was to bring peace to the black majority and give them the right to vote in both national and local elections. Following his release from prison, Mandela returned to the leadership of the ANC and between 1990 and 1994 led the party in the multi-party negotiations that led to the country's first multiracial elections. In 1991, the ANC held its first national conference in South Africa after its unbanning, electing Mandela as president of the organization. His old friend and colleague, Oliver Tambo, who had led the organization in exile during Mandela's imprisonment, became national chairperson. Mandela's leadership through the negotiations, as well as his relationship with President F. W. de Klerk, was recognized when they were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993. However, the relationship was sometimes strained. Following the assassination of ANC leader Chris Hani in April 1993, there were renewed fears that the country would erupt in violence. Mandela addressed the nation appealing for calm in a speech regarded as presidential, even though he was not yet president of the country at that time. Mandela said, Tonight I am reaching out to every single South African, black and white, from very depths of my being. A white man, full of prejudice and hate, came to our country and committed a deed so foul that our whole nation now teeters on the brink of disaster. The cold-blooded murder of Chris Hani has sent shockwaves throughout the country and the world. Now is the time for all South Africans to stand together against those who, from any quarter, wish to destroy what Chris Hani has gave his life for, the freedom of all of us. While some riots did did follow the assassination, negotiators agreed that democratic elections should take place on April 27, 1994, just over a year after Hani's assassination. Nelson has continued to be a man of action who made a difference in Africa that will never be forgotten. Nelson led the ANC that won him the election and after becoming president of the country's first multi-ethnic government in April 1994. After becoming president, his actions to make a difference didn't stop there, that he established a Nelson Mandela Children's Fund, a grant making body aimed at uplifting the lives of disadvantaged children during the same year. In 1995, 
He also established the TRC, Truth and Reconciliation Commission for the Investigation of Human Rights Violation under Apartheid. Establishing the TRC not only investigated the human rights, but introduced education and economic development initiatives to improve the living standards of the country's black population. His passion to change many lives in Africa was from his heart, wanted to give back some chances or some opportunities he had that all of the blacks should have and deserve. After his accomplishments with Africa and making a statement for their rights, he felt that he had done his part and headed towards retirement. Not seeking for a second election, Nelson Mandela resigned from his post with the ANC, transferring his leadership of party to his design successor, Thabo Mbeki, in December 1999. When leaving, he gave up his politics and maintained a strong international presence as an advocate of peace, social justice, and reconciliation with the work of his foundation established in 1999. He is still alive, and because of his work through the foundation, he has dedicated his retirement to a wide range of charitable work. He has founded the Nelson Mandela Foundation and a no to profit organization in 2003. His establishments focus mainly on education to building schools to get children to have an education in South Africa in supporting the peace process in Burundi to researching democratization in Africa. Everything that he maintained as a man when leaving politics. He made sure he stayed involved even though he stepped down, continuing to make a difference outside of the presidency. He changes many lives that he will be remember remembered when he does depart from this world. After Mandela left office, he still managed to maintain a strong international influence as an advocate of peace, reconciliation, and social justice. This was accomplished mainly through his passion for and work with the Nelson Mandela Foundation, established in 1999. His passion for his beloved country continued to influence around the globe as he continued traveling the world, meeting leaders, attending conferences, and collecting awards even after stepping down as president. He also continued to campaign against HIV and AIDS, while his successor, Mbeki, delayed treatment for the rising number of HIV-infected citizens. Mandela also contributed some of his wealth when he donated over a billion dollars in 2004 to South Africa for use in his three charitable organizations, Nelson Mandela Foundation, Nelson Mandela Children's Fund, and Nelson Mandela Rhodes Fund. While South Africa is facing sky-high unemployment, many fatalities due to AIDS, and is surrounded by many cities in poverty, the country has made a lot of progress thanks to Mandela. Some compare his legacy to our own President Lincoln's. He fought slavery, yet black Americans remained second-class citizens for more than 100 years, but it would be unfair to tarnish Lincoln's memory with the shortcomings of those that followed, much like Mandela's legacy. Since Mandela, South Africa's economy has shown flexibility and adaptability. While politics remain open, public debates are on meaningful issues, and politicians are responsive to the electorate. After stepping down from the public life in 2004, Mandela continued to make his presence known, and his passion carried him to call future generations to continue the fight for social justice. Throughout the hardships and the struggles Mandela has faced, his influence remains worldwide. As stated in his biography, Nelson Mandela never wavered in his devotion to democracy, equality, and learning. Despite terrible provocation, he never answered racism with racism. His life has been an inspiration to all who are oppressed and deprived, and to all who are opposed to oppression and deprivation.